Hello there, it's um, Stephen Ball here at Delphi Ball and um, I'm just going to take you through some uh, work that I've had to do recently just to get a, a PDF document to share through an Android application. Um, the move to API 26 has caused some changes in uh, permissions and um, a workaround um, that I had before which was to share the PDF file in a public folder um, and then pass a file URL to the uh, intent call to open up that file and no longer works on API 26. So you need to actually grant permissions to read it from within inside your application uh, and I have it in my cache folder which is great it means I've got less files floating around um, a little bit easier. Um, but this is a change that I was forced into in terms of having to get my application submitted up to API 26 uh, and to make it work. So um, what I'm going to do first I'm just going to go to the end and show the the setup uh, and then we'll kind of work back to the configuration um, that needs to be done. So um, here's my Android application and uh, well, it's on my Android phone, let me just go and find my application here. Now under the, uh, the resources um, one of the things I've got going on here is I'm just downloading PDFs from the internet and um, once it's downloaded, uh, it then caches into the cache folder and it's now launching by the intent. And you can see here's the, uh, the PDF document straight up. Uh, next time I come through, it opens straight up because the files are downloaded and cached in my cache folder. So that's the, the functionality. Uh, let's look at how we've done that in code. Okay, so um, here we are in, in my code and um, I, I'm just going to highlight a, an extract part here. Um, I have a document object um, and uh, basically I'm picking up if it's a PDF document, which it is, um, then I'm just checking to see if the cached public file path, um, which is a property that I have created, um, used to have a, a private cache and then copy it to the public cache. Um, so I've just kind of recoded that to just point to the local file now at the moment as I'm being uh, going through and refactoring this. Um, if the, the file is there basically, then it's shared um, on whichever platform we're on. So I'm um, typically just using the web browser um, to share the PDF through the web browser. Uh, it does a perfect job of opening it up to view. Um, but on Android, obviously, we need to use the intents. Now, to do that, uh, instead of passing it as a file, we actually need to pass it as a content um, URI. And uh, the content URI here um, is not the actual file path, um, which is what it used to be to share it in the public file path. Um, here we are actually um, uh, asking the Android helper to get the activity package name. So the, uh, the Android helper uh, is part of the Android APIs.helpers. Uh, get back to where we were. Um, so we get the actual package name. So this is typically um, your URI uh, kind of reversed order. So like com dot website dot application name. Um, so mine's uk dot co dot delphiable dot, and then my application name. And then I've got another dot provider. So that's actually giving it the provider who's providing the content uh, and we have to go and define that provider in the XML files in a moment uh, and then once we've given it a provider and um, the provider then maps to a specific location it's like having a virtual directory that you map inside your application and then you give it a specific folder path um, that you're you're mapping to and then the file so I'm saying go find this provider this folder that my provider is sharing and then this file within that folder. So we're not actually giving the physical path on the actual application um, but we are providing this kind of virtual URL. So to make that bit work now um, obviously we need to define a few bits and this is where we start working with the XML files and the, uh, the template files that come with the application. So let's move backwards to that. So the key things to remember here is the dot provider and the, the BB resources. So let's go back 
to my application folder where everything's been produced. Now within here, um, there's a couple of files that we need to, to know about. First one is the Android manif manifest template. Now this file automatically copies in from this location here through your users, your username, app data, roaming, Embarcadero, BDS, then your version of uh, Rad Studio, so I'm on 19, Tokyo, uh, and then Android manifest.xml. So you can go find this file, and uh, in fact, uh, let's have a quick look. I've got that file down here, and I've actually been and modified this file already. I just changed the target SDK version to be 26, uh, and then anytime this gets recreated for new applications I'm producing, it will automatically be setting the target SDK version to be 26, which is the minimum required now for the Android App Store. Um, it saves me having to go and modify this later on. So. That's the, the kind of master one that gets copied into a blank template, uh, into a blank application. And then within the application, uh, as you build for the first time, you'll get this Android manifest.template. And that's basically a copy in. Um, this becomes the specific template for your project. Um, now, the first thing that I've done in here, and you can see it's really got the 26 in, uh, the rest of the, the dollar parameters are all kind of still the same. Um, the one thing I have done here is I've added an additional section before the close tag for application. And here I'm actually putting uh, dollar package dollar dot provider. So remember we said in code we have that dot provider. Go back here and we can see that dot provider. So we're saying go use this provider and then go to the BB resources. So the provider. Um, which be my application provider. Um, we're saying this is not exported and we're going to be using a grant URI permissions. And then we've got this metadata here that says, okay, this is actually about Android support file provider paths. So it's saying this is a path for providing information about files that are being shared. And then the resource that talks about this is to be found in the XML file provider document. So, where's this XML file provider? Well, build your application for the first time and then go into the build folder and then carry on through um, your version and then into your actual specific build folder and into the resources. Um, before we go into the resources, though, here's the Android manifest and you can see now that uh, the, the, uh, the values have been updated to give you the full qualified names. So uk.co, Delphia Ball, Basketball, Ref App, Provider. So, um, and uh, this is in XML File Provider. So in the resources, there's now an XML folder which I created. And I created a file provider.xml. Uh, and then you can just copy this directly in. Um, there's an, uh, it's just XML version 1. Uh, and then it has uh, a paths. It's just a... a XMLS namespace of Android uh, and then uh, resource Android and then in here there's different uh, values you can put in there's file path, um, there's cache path and a few other bits uh, you can look these up on the uh, the Android documentation if you want uh, but in here there's I put cache path which is the cache path within my application and that's the same as tpath dot um, get cache path um, and then uh, my name for this provider is BB Resources. Now you can name it whatever you want, and that's be what you put in your code. Um, the physical path for it is BB Resources, and then I put the forward slash in here as well, um, just to say that it, it's it's within that folder. And and that's it. So this file here for the file provider, plus the addition that we have within the provider part then actually tells uh, your application that it can share files within this folder and that's how it picks up the name URL. So we've got that bit done. Now there is one change that we need to make to the intents code. So um, beyond the uh, initial samples that uh, allow you to share a, a file um, that come within the samples directory, one thing you do need to do here is you need to actually add this flag for 
um, flag grant read URI permission. So it allows you to read that file. You can do grant um, write URI as well, and you can set additional flags for that. Um, and that will allow you to, um, the other application to make modifications to the file that you send. So if you're editing an image, for example, then you could send the, the image out and then have it edited and then you've got the update still within your application. Um, here, the, uh, the data and the type. So the data here, I'm just using the, the JURI, uh, strings JURI, to give me um, convert my content URI in, in here. And then it's application PDF um, is the, the file type. Uh, and then with the intent that's been created, I just literally start the activity and that then opens up the, the PDF. So to sum up, um, we now have PDF documents sharing. Um, they're not sharing the physical location, they're sharing the kind of this virtual path um, which we've set up and configured through the XML files that allow your application now to share securely your file from within your application um, and only at the point you want it shared and modified and worked on. And, um, uh, and we've seen now how to do that with a PDF document um, that we've downloaded and cached into our cache folder.